reading the three books for the first time, because I just don't pull a book out for fun. You know? So I'm going to write a book. It has to have some sort of continuity. It has to have a reason to exist. It must have an enemy to aim at. It must have a problem to attempt to create, to correct, or to help create, uh, correct some problems. Because one person or one book can't correct any problem. It can only lend to it. Culture Bandits, uh, uh, Culture Bandits Volume 1, I dealt with the musical culture of our people. Now, the reason why I even deal with culture band is because I've seen when I was in school that it's a struggle for our minds as I watch our brothers and sisters fight from Desert Storm, Panama, Grenada, Vietnam, Korea, <coughs> World War I, World War II, all the way back to when Abraham Lincoln and, 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 uh, talked us into helping them win the Civil War, that it was the African warrior that was the strongest part of their military machine. However, you say, well, how can we fight for them if during the Revolutionary War, their so-called Revolutionary Bourgeois War, this wasn't about nothing, about them banging their mom. England, they banged them. Think about it now. They said, look, I wanted to give y'all an opportunity. We want to colonize this place. I'm going to let you go. I'm going to let you out of the prisons. You white prostitutes, I'm going to let you out of prostitution. I'm going to let you go to this place we're going to call America or, call, or the colonial states. All I want from you, and the mentally ill, let them out. All I want from you is send me back some bread. I call it taxes. Send me some of that money you make. You know what I mean? Could be gold, could be anything over there. Go on back. So they came in some of the 13 colonies. Now this is our African interpretation of what they did. The 13 colonies be that they were not only but thieves and prostitutes and crazy white people. And the same white people ain't saying nothing, so you know what kind of shape they're in. They got together and said, we ain't sending mom nothing, <laughs> okay? We ain't giving her nothing. I'm a thief, I ain't been giving nobody nothing. So we're going to take this land and we're going to keep it. Mom is a thousand miles away across the sea. She can't deal with this. And they took, they made them 13 colonies, one nation, and banged their mom, <laughs> Mother England, who freed her even though they weren't no good. Then you have the daughters of the American Revolution come along and say, my father and mother was in the Revolutionary War. And I always say, oh, which, 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 your mom was a whore? <laughs> you say, wait, 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 no, no, no. Your mom was a whore? My father, your father was a thief, or was he insane? Because they that's all they let roll over here, okay? They say, oh, oh, and that breaks down that elitistness of white supremacy. So we have to look at things from an African point of view. So that's what happened. We have to see how is it? that we continually go to war for our American war machine and die and won't lift a finger for an African. How is that? When I was young, I said, it has to be the mind. It has to be the mind. It must be a brainwashing component to their system of oppression that we must analyze, break down, and tear asunder. And that's when I started researching culture bandits. My cab driver who just dropped um, uh, me off here was from Ghana. And he was saying in general conversation, homeless people. So, huh, in Africa, there's no such thing as homeless people because we have an extended family. But you guys don't subscribe to the extended family in any, really, in any real form from your heart and soul. Therefore, you have homeless people. They have problems that the state, you want the state to take care of. You want the government to take care of. And I listened and I didn't say nothing. I said, yeah, cool. I know where you're coming from. So therefore, it's culture. We must, re we must seize our culture. That's one thing. Culture, a lack of culture leads to menthicide, leading you being exploited for other people in interest. I don't care whether you're in the so-called Caribbean. I don't care whether you're in uh, 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 Africa. I don't care whether you're here in the belly of the beast or in the Pacific. 
Africans are exploited because of menthicide, because they do not have a binding culture. They let somebody take it away, or they let other people interpret it. So we came up with culture balance. There's some definitions we must understand to function. People throw the word culture around very loosely. They take the European point of view that culture is dolls and dances, you know, clothing. Culture is everything you do, how you do it, when you do it, how often and why. Therefore, everything falls under the realm of culture. We must, we must understand that everything we do is culture. For example, if the white boys say, dang, rap music, boy, God, black people are talking to themselves in a cadence, in a use of language that we don't understand. <laughs> they don't understand what you're saying. That's a product from slavery. When the slave master would be standing right there, and you'd have to talk to the brethren or the sistren without him knowing what you're talking about. Therefore, we manipulate the English language better than anybody on the face of the earth. So if you remember when rap music first began, they said that black English wasn't worth nothing, that you're backwards. And at the same time, Every addition to the dictionary has come from black English. Everyone from ain't to dis. So you can talk right in front of them. And as soon as they can decode what you're saying, you change the language. Be cool means chilling. And we always tell each other, hey amen, okay, be cool, man. Because as a slave, you say you cannot react to slavery. You cannot react to the police. You must always be on guard. So you got to be cool. Hey, man, be cool. So what you doing, man? I'm chilling. So they just upgrade it. And the mechanism moves. The language moves. The language is alive. We make it talk. Well, instead of saying disrespect, we say, yo, man, you know, homie over here, white boy, you know, he dissing everybody, man, ain't giving up no props. He don't have the slightest idea what you just said. <laughs> the slightest. And he'll walk up to some yo-yo and say, well, what does that mean? And some brothers just don't break it down. Well, this is disrespect props, you know. You, you know, you don't get any, you know, you don't get any, uh, uh, you don't get any respect, you know. You know, I mean, you know, you get props when you do something nice. <laughs> well, you know, we used to... <laughs> In the 60s, mm -hmm. we used to grab people during their break their arm if we caught them soul shaking with a white boy. Mm -hmm. That's a cultural cleansing. One guy with the white paint on. I was wild. No paint on. <laughs> <laughs> I was wild and young, you know. And good didn't have hope. But <laughs> that's what we used to do. Go, yeah, you do this and do that. And what did they do with that? The black power shake. They made it a sports shake. They're all sport athletes. <laughs> because White athletes try to hang with the brothers. Because when you think of physical, you think of us. Because we're high on the evolutionary scale. They know it. So the whole change of language, the manipulation of language, brings about new culture. They have to break it down because they always have to understand what you're saying. So when you say we're going to kick their butt, they want to know who that you're going to come and kick their butt. They can't be guessing and going, ha, 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 he, he, he. So they send in the Beastie Boys, Marky Mark, young black teenagers. They send in Snow to get in, in, into dance hall. Right? White boy named Snow, informer. Making up words as he go. Playing with the patois. They always invade their culture bandits. See, and it's very important. Another definition, the culture. Everything we do, how we do, when, and why. The mass media. The mass media is the electronic apparatus that hits us all at the same time with the message that white supremacy is cool and blacks ain't worth nothing. Okay? That's the mass media. Whether they're giving you Thundercats a cartoon, whether they're giving you uh, uh, those single girls, Latifah and them. I call it Skeezers Anonymous. How do you go from Queen Latifah into Skeezer? Cool 
shows. Living color, cool shows. How can we say Stepford and Fletcher ain't cool, but living color's cool? And now you know what they do? They got this new thing. They brought back your mama. The dozens. And on national television, these niggas will get up and say, your mother so black, your mother got big living. We ha, 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 ha. To African women now, they need their neck busted. But that'll come. The mass media propagates those ideas to everybody, even fashions. We came out white. Uh, take, take a name, for instance, Naughty by Nature. Translated, what does it mean? Genetically inferior. I'm naughty by nature. No wonder they put out something like I'm down with OPP. Mm. So they take the talent of the African and use it against it as culture bandits. They know if they do revolutionary rap, they can't get on. So they'll sell out. And since we don't control our culture, we have people playing for white young businessmen who don't do nothing but make fun of our music and culture. We gotta understand uh, imperialism. <clears throat> imperialism is to go to somebody else's land and take it, take the natural resources, the land, labor, and resources of a people, send it all to your country, and drive that country into underdevelopment. Kill who you choose and set up any type of uh, system, economic system for exploitation imperialism. Colonialism is the, the business apparatus to manage that. Okay? Colonialism. See? Then there's neo-colonialism when you use indigenous people as if they're sham independence to do the same thing the white boy do to make sure all the goods and services and everything goes out of your country into their hand. We suffer from neo-colonialism here in the belly of the beast because our land, labor, resources have been stolen. Our culture has been stolen. And they use these Negro leaders to deliver the goods. The goods they deliver. We have to start thinking as a nation. So that is what colonialism, neocolonialism is. Propaganda means to propagate your ideas. So now that we have those terms, we understand what they're doing is culture bandits. They're moving in on your culture. Then I want to add to subliminal messages because we're going to be talking about the media, <laughs> is when you're talking about one thing, but you're sliding something in underneath. Subliminal, underneath, you know? They do it all the time. For example, there's a commercial, I don't know whether you see it here, for Boku. You ever heard of Boku? Well, it's a drink. And they have this white boy saying, Boku, Boku, Boku is a great drink. He said, who made Boku? What great people made Boku? Who put black grapes together with white grapes? Who put them together? Some little message integration. Who? Boku. Who, did the, uh, did the uh, spacemen really make the pyramids? Boku, Boku. And he's gone. Again, now that it's been proven that they didn't make no pyramids, they say, well, you didn't either. The Martians did it. <laughs> That's so stupid. <laughs> I said, well, the Martian must look just like me because my ancestors put my face all over. All over. The Olmec heads in Mexico look just like my brothers and sisters. The pyramids was made by us, but they used that against. Here, somebody can take my chair, my chair here, you. and I can put it back where I got it. And I'll just lean when I have to. So it's important that we understand those things. Now, we understand culture. The importance of culture, it's everything you do, how you do it, how often, and why. Everything we produce fall under the realm of culture. Therefore, either you're dabbling in somebody else's culture, or you're creating your own. Or someone's watching you create culture, then controlling it economically, controlling the mass media, and then turning it around and using it against you. Classic case of that. Bob Marley, reggae, spun out of the suffering of the masses of our people in Jamaica so they can articulate their pains, their woes, and their aspirations. Okay? To change that around, though, first of all, let me go here. 
when I was in Zimbabwe, I found out many things about Bob Marley. And I've interviewed Bob many times and met and talked with a great brother, one of the best we ever produced, okay? But Bob Marley took his money and he, he bought many guns in Zimbabwe. And then did the propaganda to say, stay up Zimbabwe in the song Zimbabwe. So he was aiding, making the Pan-African connection. All Africans connected, Pan-Africanism, I should have did that. And when I say Pan-Africanism, I am a Pan-Africanist, but I am a revolutionary Pan-African. It doesn't mean, because all Africans can get together and do some dumb stuff. You know, I'm for revolutionary Pan-Africans, which means changing the social system, busting down white supremacy, snatching our land, labor, and resources back, and getting some retribution for slavery. Okay? Never forget retribution. I know we are kind and gentle and loving people. Yeah. You know? But we got to do it. No white man has ever paid did one minute of time for slavery. Here we got hundreds of millions of people dead in the greatest crime ever known to humanity, and not one peck of wood got busted in his hand yet. No. Oh. Can't you hear the wail of the ancestors? Can't you hear the wail of that woman as she's being raped? Or the baby cut out of her belly and stomped with their dirty boots? Can't you hear the hundreds of million people underneath the sea crying? Now, if you take them people who call themselves Jews, so-called Jews, Eastern Europeans, or adapt to our religion, they're chasing 100-year-old Nazis across the galaxies and amongst the stars to pay them back for that skirmish they had that they call a holocaust. Wasn't no holocaust. It's about six million people. Six million people? That ain't nobody. We've been dying for 20 centuries. Don't tell me about no Anne Frank. That ain't my problem. That was white on white crime. Never heard that before, huh? Nobody says the mafia is white on white crime. Nobody even deal with that. That's only for black on black crime. Well, each race have its criminal component that has to be dealt with by the masses. That's very important. So if we understand culture, bandage street must be made and come to a halt. I had to give it a label. We all knew that. I, I didn't have to tell you that they steal our culture. What we did need to know, however, was that if we don't get it back, we will die. We have been dying. We can create cults of outer garments. For example, in Trinidad, the brothers and sisters used to walk along the beach after oil was discovered and cry because of the destruction of their beach and the uh, ecological damages done by that nasty oil, killing the fish, killing the trees, killing the people. They picked up the nasty old drums. They said, look at this. This old nasty drum, 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 oil drum, drum, tune it up. Oil drum, give me some sticks. And made culture out of a negative. Our children, who come from an electronic era, have broken down turntables. And disco music is raging and driving the whole nation insane. You know, led by Donna Summers, who's married to a German with an all-German orchestra playing that garbage. So what happens? They say, we want to make a record. I want to speak about my situation. So, and these turntables won't even, they won't even, they won't even, hey, they won't even, hey, they won't even, hey, whitey ain't no good, whitey ain't no good, until they make culture out of a negative. We are culture. And they follow behind us, picking what we throw out. Oh, I got that, I got that, I got that. You know, Peggy Lee following behind Billy Holiday. Elvis Presley following behind Ruth Brown. He wasn't even following behind a man. Following behind Ruth Brown. Then he come out, you ain't nothing but a hound. Sister sung that. You ain't nothing but a hound dog was sung to a male. Good old Elvis Presley. They won't let him die, because he's the signature of culture banditry. He's the greatest culture bandit known to mankind. You know? I was
wish I could dig him up and kill him again. <laughs> so you're understanding culture banditry. Now you tie it into book two. Again, there's a reason to put book two. Do a book or don't do it. Book two is the black holocaust. As I travel from place to place, people used to say, Albert oh, Modell. I said, yes. You really believe they're trying to kill us? I said, whoa, freeze. What'd you say? Do you really think they're trying to kill us? I don't think they'll kill us all. I said, brother, <laughs> stop. <laughs> don't do that. And now, now, brother, now. Every city. So I said, if we don't, it's good to make fun of it, but why don't I come up with a tool that gives us a functioning understanding of the Black Holocaust? Trace it back to ancient Egypt, track it from the Persians all the way to AIDS, and you've got something. And make it concise, make it small, make it readable, make it dynamic, and you can sell that there's a Holocaust, because there is. So we came up with the Black Holocaust. The results of losing your culture is a continuing Holocaust. The book that will be released in January is called Culture Bandits II, The Annihilation of African Images. And that's where we tie it all in, forever. So now you see why the Jews and the white people are hopping. Oh, the canceling, man, don't let them come in. Don't let them talk to them. Come on, man, how can you stop me from talking to my own people? Come on, man, you think you have more juice than you got? He got that kind of juice. He couldn't stop you from coming here, could he? So I have to be here so we can rap. That's all. If you get in the position of saying, I'm only going to speak for $4,000, then you can't talk to your people. Nor should you. Because you're talking commerce. Instead of how do we get out of this dope jam, out of the black holocaust, and back into the sunshine of freedom. And that's our journey. So the Black Holocaust, you tie it in. You say what everybody knows, that there's a hundred million Africans under the sea alone. First of all, now measure that to six million tiny little simple little Jews who were sold out of the river by other Jews. Read. They sold each other out. Many times people like Eichmann was a Jew. They didn't say Hitler, because you can't tell what a Jew is a religion. It's not a race. If you ever subscribe that it's a race, you lose them. You can't find them. Because they're all pecker woods with them big noses. You know, how do you know what a Jew is? That's why they like African slave. Yeah, there's a dark skin one. That's one. Slave capturing. Jews ain't just a white boy. Edward G. Robinson had a big argument with Hollywood. Because the Jews controlled Hollywood. Edward G. And Edward G. Robinson, Edward G. Robinson's name was Edward Goldstein. He said, I want to use my own name. He said, you can't use your own name. I want to use my own name. So you can't use your own name. Well, compromise, you'll be Edward G. Robinson, Edward Goldstein Robinson. And he played like he was a wasp. <clears throat> and his name was Robinson. <laughs> you know, so they're all over the place. I don't go Jew hunting. Jewish is only part of white supremacy, who have its own system. Then you have the Illuminati, you have the skull and bones, you have the trilateralists and on and on, all these configurations of white supremacy that'll all get together and kick our butt at any given time, they're gonna fight over the, the, uh, the wealth amongst each other. But on the same page, they all when it's time to kick our butt. So we have to deal with them as a whole. A lot of people going, is this a Jew? And they're going, ain't none of them Jews. You know, you, know, you gotta be from Ethiopia to be a Jew. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know what I mean? If you ain't from Ethiopia, and all of them got them big old noses and stuff. They're from Eastern Europe. They Croatian and all over there with them people rumbling now. You see how they rumbling? Mm -hmm. Because they're nothing but white tribes. They always have been. Do you remember in our history class? They said Britain and France had a hundred years war. A hundred years. That's a heck of a rumble. That's a long run. <laughs> Was anybody keeping score? I mean, does this ever end? But what does that tell me from an African mindset? I say, oh, I see. You're warlike. You love war. Peace is your abnormal. It's not your norm. I see what's happening with you. No problem. I can deal with it. The genocide of our people <coughs> in Namibia from 1904 to 1907. The Kai 
rise of Germany killed 16 million Africans in Namibia alone. In Congo, King Leopold killed millions of Africans, cutting off breasts and penises, suffering when you didn't bring in your rubber quota, cutting out tongues, swatting you, grabbing babies and doing a thing they call a wishbone, grabbing a black baby now, like this. One leg here, one leg there. And they used to bet on who could rip the baby completely apart. It is documented. So that's a Holocaust. All the way up to all the way up to Azania, South Africa, right this moment. Where good old Nelson Mandela is selling you way on down the river. Money, 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 money. <laughs> money. <laughs> money. Filthiest man that ever walked. But the mass media could make you love your enemies and hate your friends. They told you he was the man. First of all, you have to study who Nelson Mandela was. Nelson Mandela was an integrationist before he went to prison. You have to read the Freedom Charter from the 50s. To know him, how would we know somebody without researching them? We have to find out who they were, what was their ideology, what was their action. The ANC has always been co controlled by those so-called Jews of the Communist Party of South Africa led by Joseph Slovo. Joseph Slovo was head of the ANC military. That's why they weren't killing no white people. We have to know that to make a conscious decision on whether I love you or whether you should be discarded. Now, a trick that white, white people like to use well, here we are in a war against white supremacy. And a voice comes from outside the field. Martin, Martin, come out, come out. Hey, Martin, don't leave the foxhole. Stay here, man. No, I got to go out. Why are you calling? And when Martin goes out, he gets a Nobel Peace Prize from the enemy. Why would the enemy give you a peace prize if you're doing the right thing, which is busting him in his butt? Ralph Bunch, who helped establish the state of Israel, come out, come out, we'll give you the Nobel Peace Prize. He leaves our foxhole, gets a prize from us for his service to them. Nelson Mandela, the Philadelphia Medal, the uh, uh, Nobel Peace Prize. Huh? With a whole lot of money, too, thank you. With a whole lot of money with it. Over $100,000. You cannot be loyal. Two things don't occupy the same space at the same time. You cannot be loyal to us and be getting awards from them. Because people who are loyal to us, they kill. They discredit. They attempt to destroy. So the back Black Holocaust, just to get us to a certain point, Black Holocaust have hit a phase now where they, they have made an analysis that says, we don't want to fight after men in the street. I don't care if they ain't got no guns. I don't care if they ain't got nothing. They're deadly. We know it. We won every war with them. They got more heart than anybody I ever seen. So we need a higher form of killing. And they come out of their think tanks and their evils, uh, uh, laboratories with crack and AIDS. I call this phase of the Holocaust the invasion of the body snatches. Now they go inside your body and destroy you from within. You never confront them. This is the people who had the mentality to come up with nuclear war. They had a neutron bomb, still do, that they can drop here and kill all the people and the land is not destroyed. Because the land is primary to them and people don't mean a thing. The invasion of the body snatches. AIDS come out of Fort Detrick, Maryland. They whip it on the people. Have you running off well in the wrong direction? Telling you that <laughs> buying condoms will save you when it's not even a venereal disease. And then they sell you the condoms and they get richer and richer and richer and richer and richer. Even while they fooling with your mind, they get richer and richer and richer. Crack was discovered because they say, you know something? These Negroes ain't gonna never be able to afford no good coke. 
Coke was always the white yuppie drug. Can't afford no Coke. They came up with a derivative. Now ain't no BB B boy come in no laboratory with his beak and say, I'm gonna get, I'm coming with new drugs, man. You know what I mean? You <laughs> see, get my microscope, man. I'm a beaker, man. You know what I mean? No, mix this with that, man. I went to Kennedy's class one day. That came from sophisticated technology. And it's crack. And they swore it was instantly, instantly, instantly addictive. Now, how many of us know people who kick crack? Because ain't nothing inst instantly and forever addicted to Africans if they become African-centered. Because it's all in the mind. If you believe that it's addicting, then you say, well, I'll never get off this man. All I can do is get my next hit. How many, especially young sisters, you seen fight with that disease? That's what it is, it's a disease that they were born in. How do they do it? Look what happens to a sister. A sister does not sell. She's not part of the whole uh, dis distributing apparatus. So she has to sell her body. She has to do the foulest things. And the destruction of that sister is the destruction of generations. So it's clever, okay? Demonically clever. The only way they can ever be creative and clever is demonically. You ever notice that? Thanks, bro. The only way they can, when it comes to killing something, they can come up with some ideas. I studied medieval uh, uh, Europe during the Inquisition. You should have seen the ways they had to kill each other. You could have seen what they pushed up into each other. I'm in, in the United States where they used to go on the witch hunt. You can see how they used to kill each other, and you know how they can kill you during the lynching. Creatively. Beast debauchery. Is in their culture. So if you're not African-centered, if you're in their culture, that becomes part of your life, and you have brothers and sisters shooting each other up for a pair of sneaks. Selling your whole race down the river for $25 in a Jeep that you'll keep for three weeks before they lock your butt up. <laughs> And the youth, the youth that got the heart, but the misdirection <laughs> winds up incarcerated, and the hood has no protection. So, crack and AIDS go into the body, invasion of the body snatchers. Ritalin is a drug given to young little babies who are hyped. They don't want to hear nothing. They don't want to hear that it may be that they had cake and soda for breakfast, mm -hmm. or that they had caffeine and soda, mm -hmm. or maybe that they're from a dysfunctional family and has never been taught to discipline, or maybe that, that like in my case, I used to couldn't sit, shoot, sit still because what they were teaching never made sense to me. And I used to make fun of them. They just throw me out to class. I sit there, and then they tell you, say, okay, you heard. Now, you heard that bull crap I, I was teaching you, right? Now, write it back to me. <laughs> this is called a test. <laughs> I don't think like that. And as a kid, then you're following your mother right down on you. Well, just get your lessons. Just give them what they want. But what they want, Ma, is me. <laughs> they want my mind. They say, you're crazy. I say, okay, yeah, I'm crazy, but I ain't giving up my mind. You give up your mind. Because I could look at a cowboy and Indian picture and see who I should be down with. She said, well, what do you mean? I said, I'm watching television, Ma. Let's go see Roy Rogers, okay? She said, stay with me. And here come the settlers riding across the prairie. Happy trails. <laughs> <laughs> got their pots and pans. Back of the wagon, right? Happy trail to you. Oh, it's nice out here today, isn't it? Yes, dear. <laughs> then you hear boom, 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 yeah. boom, boom, boom. <laughs> now, you know that's people of color. When you hear a drum, <laughs> they don't even have a drum. You would hear a violin. <laughs> yeah, boom, boom, boom. Da, 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 da. I was decoding this as a child. I said, whoa, I like first, I like the music, right? <laughs> I can't deal with that happy trail, okay? It's country and western. I don't know nothing about it. I'm only eight. I said, now watch, Ma. Then the 
an Indian say, where are you going? As you get in a circle. We're settling. An Indian say, in my living room? You rolling up into my living room with your pots and pans and your ugly little kids, saying you settling in my hood? Where you get that? Because we got guns. And I break it down and I say, you see? That don't make no sense. So Thanksgiving, I ain't an Indian, and you can't dress me like a settler. I ain't got nothing to do with Thanksgiving. Really? Not a thing. And after they finished eating the turkeys, Ma, what did they do? They killed all the Indians. Come on, man. I won't be one of them. You know, brother and sister said, hey, you got good hair. Well, I got some Indian in me. You know what I mean? <laughs> you, you go ahead with that, okay? <laughs> I ain't got no Indian in me, all right? I'm a straight up blood. Okay? I got no Indian in me. I like this stuff, all right? All right. Since I throw the comb away, all right? <laughs> but see, it's cool when you can make the analysis. So I said, well, what about religion? I say, I'm following religion. I'm following in God's image. He said, no, you're not. You're warlike. You know, you fight. You know, you can be evil. I said, that's God's image, the one that they teach it here. She said, how, boy? Now, now you play with the dope stuff. You really get skunked here, you know what I mean? So I'm going to play this right. How, boy? And she said, <laughs> And I'm looking up and I said, well, Father, uh, wait, wait, when, when, when Moses came down from the mountain with the Ten Commandments scene, and he said, hey, I got the stuff, and he looked down, and they prayed to a golden idol, and he threw them down. What did Mo do? Mo stepped on a big rock, and he said, all of y'all who believe in the, uh, the Lord God, our God, stand over here. All of you don't keep partying over there. And then the Lord killed everybody over there. I said, that's in the Bible. Sodom and Gomorrah, did he scuff everybody up? It's in the Bible. When he told Pharaoh, hey, man, why don't you let my people roll out of there? Pharaoh said, ain't happening. This is mythology, of course. <laughs> I'm going to go with it. <laughs> but he said, Pharaoh said, no, they ain't rolling out of here. What did he do? The, the most powerful God, and I'm talking about their European God. Did he strike them down, uh, Pharaoh down with lightning and then move on from there? He killed the firstborn of everybody. Come on, man. Is that godly? So when I say somebody stepped to me, one of these little white boys stepped to me, I'm going to bust him up. I'm acting in the image of God. And Lot's wife, he said, don't turn around. All right, we know how some women are. She said, I wonder what's happening over there. He turned into a pillow of salt. No. <laughs> Come on, man. So what means... And what that means is, the Europeans say, if you're my enemy, I deal with you thusly because this is the King James interpretation of what went down. Okay. I don't debate religions. I don't diss religions. But when they were pushing that on me, it never could come through the computer. The cowboys could. If you ever, if you want to ever see a movie that's really good come out of Hollywood, see this movie called Zulu Dawn. Not Zulu. Zulu Dawn. They have a scene, Whitey, you know, lined up in these uniforms, it's 100 degrees outside, cross the river, and to Zululand, right? And one blood stands on the mountain and says, why do you come to the land of the Zulu? You should hear the white boy's answer. Well, the great qu qu queen from across the pond said, this be ours. You see, yeah, and all the brothers say, well, yeah, all right. <laughs> Keep coming. And at the end, they kill them all. It's a true story. Kill them all at the end, they run around with the British flag and all that, having a ball. Uh, that's the history of Zulu. <laughs> How do you come to the land of, and other battling? Because we're going to take your stuff. But now it's no more confrontational. They're using the technology that they developed because while we was working, they could study. While we was working, they could invent stuff. Why they didn't even, they didn't even suckle their own babies. You know? They ain't even cooked their own food. And I, I used to laugh. I told one professor, I said, he said, well, back in the day, we used to die. You die of old age at 40, 42. I said, yeah, because we were cooking. <laughs> that's why you died. That's why you died. And to this day, that's the first time they dug it. <laughs> but they'd rather die. 
didn't give up that fried chicken that Colonel Sanders, swear to God, he had the recipe. You see what I'm saying? You know, they'd rather die of skin cancer than get out of the sun. Simply put, I'd rather die than stay white. That's what it says to me. So Ritalin is given to little children and it stunts their growth. It bothers with their hormones and their genes because drugs should not be given to children. Okay? That's an invasion of the body snatches. Crack, aid, Ritalin. Then they got a thing called Prozac. Now, your society drives you into depression. If you're not African-centered, if you're African-centered, you can predict and see everything going down and make your adjustments. Instead of thinking there's something wrong with you, something wrong with your family, or something, you know, it's just terrible, I don't know what to do, I'm, I'm discombobulated with you. Once you know white supremacy, you ain't got no problem. You can be broke as you can be and say, I know why I'm broke. But this is how I'm going to have to deal with this. And seriously, if you really want to seriously stop homelessness, you have to acquaint them with white supremacy. How did you get in this condition? There is nothing wrong with you. Systematically designed to drive you to nothing and to decay and be so blown apart that you can't even kick in a door of a border of building, close the door, get a day job, hustle for a few pennies, pick this, do that, and get yourself a kerosene heater and then get just eat off fruits and stuff because that's what you should be eating off anyway you know what i mean and and begin to build your life and you can't build it if you don't know what white supremacy is so that's the reality you wouldn't take drugs if you knew white supremacy was the problem but when you think it's you and when you're basing that on the off coming out of eurocentric educational system there's no way you can find yourself out your culture was taken by the culture bandits and you're in the middle of a holocaust dying you know? So they give them Prozac, which drive them clay insane. They kill their children. You know, they kill the whole family. You know, they run out, they disappear. They go crazy, and they can never fend for themselves, which brings you homelessness. Then they give you Norplant, invasion of the body snatchers. Put a plant on your arm, a, a, a patch on your arm that's supposed to be birth control. You know, and, and feeding into your body chemicals that you shouldn't even be dealing with. The black people are dying. They give you nicotine patches and tell you it's nicotine. You don't know what's in that leaking into your body. The invasion of the body snatchers. See what I'm saying? You're dealing with alcohol that you take internally when you get depressed. But a lot of people, see, let me tell you the trick. For years they always taught you, want to have a good time? Have some wine. Get yourself a 40. Yeah. Get this. Happy times. Get some gin if you want to feel real frisky. But all along, these things are depressants. They take you down. They don't take you up. So then you're having a tug of war with yourself. You know, drunk all this gin. And you thought you was going to be frisky. And you sit off the press. I'm not a man. <laughs> Invasion of the body snatchers. Immunization. Oh, man, they want to immunize everybody. The invasion of the body snatchers. Chemicals directly inside the body of the people they hate. First of all, black people have yet to come to the point that they hate us. The only person who hates us more than them is Michael Jackson. <laughs> we'll get to that a little later. He's the only one who hates us more than white people. Okay? And now they got their foot in him. He can't come home. It's a great lesson. He worked with them. He was down with them. He loved them. He'd rather be under the armpit of Elizabeth Taylor than have a nice queen. And now they finish with him and discard him. He can't even come home. Ain't that something? Because when we all get scuffed up, we would like to go home. <laughs> we'll go home to your queen, baby. Don't tell nobody I said this, but ow. <laughs> there was no change, but you say ow. <laughs> because certain stuff hurt, boy. You know? So all of that, crack, AIDS, Ridley, Prozac, Norplants, nicotine patches, alcohol, immunization, and on and on and on. My addiction is sugar. <clears throat> sugar is, you know what they used to do? And they still do it. 
They put sugar in baby food. They put it in everything. They pound it in ketchup. And it kills you, and you have a hard time. My queen's trying to stop smoking, and I'm trying to break a sugar addiction. Serious sugar, because I can get down. I mean, beyond reason. That's when you know it's addiction. When you can bust a whole cake, you know you're wrong. You know you're wrong. There's no way you can do it. You can't eat a, a whole cake and say, well, that was tasty. No nourishment, no nutrition, nothing but sugar and mucus. Oh, no, don't even talk about ice cream. Come on, food. I'm mainlining ice cream. <laughs> ice cream in the Man, but I'm gonna break that. I've got that solved because I made the analysis. Once you make the analysis, you can solve the problem. But I can put the, I can put away a half a gallon ice cream. Now I don't eat too much food. <laughs> yeah, my wife can cook too. But you know, I eat food among reason. But ice cream and cake, whoa, look out. And it will definitely kill me. So here you have culture bandits which is the method they mess with our mind. And we're in the middle of a black holocaust. We're in a phase called the invasion of the body snatchers. But they don't want to step to you. The reason they want to step to you is real. I mean, you didn't like the verdict in Simi Valley, so you darn near burnt L.A. down. <laughs> now, they know they can't manage 50 states on fire. They have people in think tanks. They give hundreds of thousands of dollars. So, you know, if the Negroes really got this, you know, we couldn't handle them. Give my money. Well, they could have asked me. I did that. Well, I gave them five grand. And I told them the same thing. And it cost them hundreds of millions to have people in think tanks. And it got FEMA, Federal Emergency Management uh, uh, Agency, with plans of collecting us. All that stuff looked good on paper, but they know darn well to collect you and to defeat you militarily, you have to first decrease your numbers with the invasion of the body snatchers. And they get people like Magic Johnson, yeah, I got AIDS. Yeah, that Magic Johnson ain't got no AIDS. Boy, no AIDS. He is a commercial. He's a commercial for AZT. People die of AZT, not AIDS. Okay? They die of the cure. Poor guy like Arthur Ashe got to do a, a, a blood transfusion. You know what I mean? You know, and uh, your boy uh, Magic, way so magical, has always been one of the greatest times. <laughs> do anything for him, skinning and grinning, you know, anything. That leads us to my presentation. It took a long time to sit there. <laughs> but, you know, you can't. Just jump into stuff and say, bah, bah, bah. but first try to get us on the same page. We're, we're trying to dismantle their cultural band and all on us to stop the black holocaust. And this stage is the invasion of body snatches where they're using chemicals and stuff against us. And we go to the drugstore and pay a large amount of money to die. So that, I'm not really uncomfortable with that because in war we're going to have our casualties and they're going to have theirs. They don't have no casualties, because they have a higher form of killing, okay? So here we sit, and we're dealing with the annihilation of African image. All my life, I've been doing remedial work with black people, trying to get them to see that they're African. What a ridiculous way to speak, mm -hmm. but a necessary way. All our lives, we will be studying to find our way back home, spiritually, mentally, and in many cases physically. And we've seen that as long as they annihilate the African image, they annihilate the African image, we come up with Harlem Renaissance. They annihilate the African image, we come up with the 60s. They annihilate the African image, and we come up with the African Senate movement of today. <coughs> yeah, when the war, that way you keep giving back. You're supposed to build on yesterday. But we're letting other people dismantle our, dismantle our consciousness. So to, let's talk through the steps of how they dismantle and keep us. When our images are annihilated where young black men could get on television and actually play the dozens. 
Your mama so black and ugly. Your mama got big lips. Your mama, first of all, they talking about our queens. They need to be punched in the throat for that alone. But no one steps to them because we don't have a norm. Our norm is if you can get over, brother, and make that money and get paid, do it. That's not a norm to win a war. So what we have to do is we come up with a norm for what is treason and what is loyalty. As I said before, taking a Nobel Peace Prize from the enemy is an act of treason. I don't care who did it. And tomorrow, if you see me going to take some award, because <laughs> I had just lost my mind. I am no more good to you. But thank you, Whitey. On behalf of my mom and father, I take the Whitey Award for sending black people to the slaughter. You know? <clears throat> One more thing on that I should, should really say. <clears throat> we take South Africa. White supremacy is done. That's why they're doing everything. If we don't take white, subvert, uh, uh, white, if we don't take South Africa and allow them to put a neo-colonial state there, it could continue to steal the precious resources that run their space program, nuclear capability, the gold and diamonds, which is the underpinning of their whole economic world. We have Mozambique. We have Angola. We have Zimbabwe. You take Southern Africa, confederate all that, and you're on the move. Boy, I wish Kwame and Krumah was alive. This is what we've been fighting for. The organization that's fighting hard, there's two of them in South Africa, the PAC, Pan-Africanist Congress, which slogan is one settler, one bullet. Hey, I'm down with that. It can't be no other way. What you gonna tell me, excuse me? <laughs> you torture my women, you brutalize my men, you slaughter my children, you gonna tell me, excuse me? Shit. Excuse me. <laughs> I know we got children, excuse me. You can't function, nobody does that. Only the African with his unforgiving heart. It begins to look like cowardice instead of forgiving heart. If you take South Africa, you got it. They're scrambling. They're trying to take Somalia. The oil reserves of Somalia will make them rich. They're also going to use Somalia to, quote, to, to control our traffic around the Horn of Africa, in which they're also going to put communication satellites to beam their propaganda all over the world. The only reason they want Somalia now is because they can't hold Israel no more. And they're coming to a new world order which brought to you by the same old folks. If in fact, I'm going off my lecture, but if in fact, you see your enemy change its deployment of his troops, you're winning the war. But we have no press, no media, no television, no radio to tell us that we're winning the war. So we act as if we're losing. If you have to drop the Berlin Wall and say, never mind, if you have to say communism, never mind. If you say Croatia and all you other buzzards, let's get together. Because the brothers and sisters are coming, taking back their stuff. We need a new world order. That changing of that configuration alone means they cannot hold the world as they're now constituted. If you look at NAFTA, that's the internationalizing of trade. White nationalists don't like it because they don't understand what's at stake. They're not only scared of genetic annihilation, they're scared we're going to put foot in you know where. Take our land back, our culture, and they're on the brink. We got them. But no one is articulating to the masses of our people that we got them on the run. Every time we got them on the run, we let them up. Every time they get up, they slaughter us for letting them get back up. So to understand what's happening around the world, they didn't go to get Noriega. They went to Panama to control the Panama Canal. And the banks in Noriega, in Black Holocaust, are the banks that they're laundering their drug money. If you don't know that, you act differently than if you do. <laughs> so it's necessary for, and I challenge, 
That's why I use war correspondent. I ain't no reporter, I ain't no journalist, because them cats is jive. I've been an editor. The stuff used to come across my desk. I said, wow, you gonna print this? No. I said, well, later for you. That's gotta be printed somewhere. Jonestown's gotta be printed somewhere. Waco has to be printed somewhere. Moving Philadelphia, the truth is nowhere to be found. So we're functioning in an invented reality. You know they're working on this thing called virtual reality? They always gave us virtual reality. <laughs> How many black kids waiting for Santa Claus? <laughs> How many waiting for a tooth fairy? You should be waiting for no kind of fairy. You know what I mean? Fairy come in your house. <laughs> African culture don't deal, we'll deal with fairies, okay? So the, the problem is, we're now at the point where the annihilation of African images, and that's what Culture Bandits 2 will be about. I take it, I dissect radio and how it's used to keep us insane and keep our images scattered. <coughs> and as we put part of Africa in our heart, because Africa, our heart is shaped like Africa. And we take the pieces like a puzzle and we be putting it together. And there's something traumatic happening, scramble the pieces out. In our lives, it could be our wife, our children, it could be crack, it could be drugs, but we'll start scrambling Africa and putting it back together. And then a policeman will knock you down, hit you in the back of your head, and a piece is scrambled. And you put it all up and you begin to begin the, the American dream and you lose your job, you lose your mortgage, you lose your car, and Africa fall upon you start putting Africa together again. We have to put it totally together, because once that's together in your heart, your mind, ain't no problem. Like they say in Jamaica, ain't no problem. No problem. Once you know what time it really is. Because then you go on the offensive. Start putting the skids and greasing them underneath them. Start taking them down. Radio is used for music. Music is a misrepresentation of our culture. For years, what they did was use R&B as the standard of black music. Jazz was a substandard. They couldn't totally understand jazz, so they came and they seized it. They seized jazz and redefined it to something they understood. And then you start hearing Kenny G and Gary Mulligans and Dave Brubeck and all these white things running around here trying to interpret our music which they don't understand. Then, more importantly, they set themselves up into the critics and the Grammy Awards to start giving awards to themselves for imitating our music, and we don't say nothing. We said, oh, Kenny G, he got it. He's king of jazz. <laughs> Michael Bolton was the king of jazz. Bring him the news. Well, so you have to get that Africa in all together when you can even go for that. Music. It's just there. Music is everything we do how we do it. We use it for fertility rights. We use it in our religion. We use it for social. We use it to have fun. We use it to soothe the blues. We use it just to play with. <coughs> you know? So then we just play with music. You know? So music is everything. You control the music of our people. You control our people. So the first part of Culture Bandits Volume 1 was strictly music. And laying down how they stole the music, why, and the historical precedents. It was very important that people understand what they do to our music, you know, because they have, first of all, they compartmentalize the music. They have jazz, rock, R&B, urban contemporary, whatever that may be, <laughs> you know, alternative. <laughs> yeah, that's a new one, alternative. Alternative to what? Either it's music or it's not. When music is just music to us, there's two important components to music to us whether we like it or whether we don't. <laughs> Half the time, we don't understand what the monk, Thelonious Monk is doing. Sometimes we don't understand what the rest of the development is doing. But it feels good in our soul, and we'll stay with it until we do understand it. And then the children build upon it. In our young people's hip-hop reaction to disco, which was a dynamic reaction, we lost certain things. They weren't using no musicians. Therefore, they weren't creating no new music. They were building on old tracks and sampling. Then that means the culture stagnated. It's progressive verbally, because rap is more progressive than R&B, because R&B is all, can I squeeze you, baby? All, can I have you, baby? My baby left me. My baby loves somebody else. I love somebody else. If loving you is wrong, I don't want to do right. Me and Mrs. Jones, can we steal away? Come on. You know, it's all garbage. And it makes it seem like the whole society is into infidelity. And if you're into infidelity, you cannot build a home. 
If you cannot build a family, you cannot build a nation. Because a family is a cell in a nation. So music, they get into it and started to decay. They got into rap with the Beastie Boys and Martin and Mark and all these white boys running around, you know? They get all up in it and it starts to decay, you know? And then we change forms. You find a, a group like Digital Planets, uh, uh, Diggable Planets, come out, start using that on a jazz, because all my music goes to an infinity. I mean, they can follow us all the way I mean, we go on and on and on, seeing arrested development come and take the whole thing, take it from the urban setting, because the urban setting are now letting them portray our black kids in sewers with chainsaws and gangster rap and cussing and mussing and all that thing. You know, they doing that to appease the businessmen. Okay? And young white boys who getting paid. So rest of development countered that and brought it home to the soil. Okay? And start singing to their ancestors and had Baba elder in the group and with full cycle. That came out of Atlanta. That's good. You know what I mean? So as you see, we're always, and they're not the only group that's doing it, but they're the only group that got through the maze of the business apparatus. They did the same thing to Bob Marley and them. They took Bob Marley and Peter Tosh and them, and they first they call it foreign music, and you can't understand what you're saying, and the rhythms are off the measure, then then once the propaganda st stops, they say, we better co-opt it because it has a Power. So they said, what we'll do, we'll give Bob Marley cancer, just giving instant cancer, just add water and stir. Yeah. Instant one of the healthiest among us. They took Bob down, laid Peter down, and blow the back of his brains out. That ain't a hit. Okay? You know, run Jacob Miller off the road, and next thing you know, what was culture reggae and articulated aspirations of the masses of our people became dance hall of this to the sisters. And they turned them mute. Your culture, now your culture was liberating. Not that they ain't struggling now. Just because that's all we hear don't mean that ain't why we, we still be struggling for days. Because there's still good culture music. Bernard Spears still around. And, and <laughs> Bernard Spears teach you one thing you need to know. Mark is Garvey. Nobody remember who Mark is Garvey. Spear. Okay? So that culture is still standing there and it's banging. And this, this dance hall is synthetic. It's akin to taking hip hop and taking public enemy in them and turning them around. Next thing they're torn with anthrax. Next thing they support the group called Young White, the Black Teenagers, and they're all white. One got dreadlocks. I don't know how white boy got dreadlocks. That stuff don't even lock. That <laughs> <laughs> don't lock. You twirl that together, you put some bubble bands on it. It has to. It doesn't lock. So, <laughs> so uh, uh, the music component. Then radio has another component called all news, which there is no news at all. That's what it means. Not all news. No news at all. Oh, the day Michael Jackson couldn't be found. <laughs> President Clinton cut a ribbon today, such and such and such. <laughs> In Somalia, the troops fed the people, such and such. There is no news at all that you need to liberate yourself to grow. None whatsoever. Donald Trump, you know, rich white people, Perot said, you know, all of this news all the time. No news on radio. None whatsoever. So really, then they got for the real idiots, all sports. Well, I think the Phillies are going to beat the Atlanta Braves. Who cares? Two racist teams. One make fun of the red men, and the Phillies ain't got no blacks. See what I'm saying? Well, like the Phillies? They really set you back because they had a little bit of success with as minimum black people. You know what I'm saying? And the best they have sitting on the bench somewhere, West Chamberlain. All sports blue, or do you think that the Falcons this year could all in for a waste of time, waste of time, waste of time? <laughs> and uh, do you think that Muhammad Ali was the best one? Marciano, a waste of time, waste of time. People spend hours listening to that stuff. No information to be found. All sports. It all equals. The music, the all news, all sports equal anti-African propaganda. 
Nowhere can you find anything to liberate self, to deal. There's nothing you can do, nothing whatsoever. That is radio as it's constituted. Then over here, you got four hours you can cop for some red game. I don't know where you're going to fell, find fellow, people like fella, you know. <laughs> I don't know where you're going to find Sunny a day, Juju, unless Paul Simon plays it. Well, wow. Wow. Yeah. You know, that is, that's Elvis' mother. It must be. <laughs> <laughs> now, that boy really got hit me. He traveled the globe, fronting white people, black people's culture, and getting paid. I had a brother of mine who asked me, he said, you like Paul Simon's Graceland? And anybody know what Graceland is? That's Elvis' house. Now here's a song with all African music about Elvis' house. <laughs> and nobody, nobody said nothing. You know? That's kind of sad. That means our computers need to plug up. Because Graceland, he's doing that, and the big hit on that, you hear the brothers, rumor, and you hear it, by the way, you heard of Lady Smith Black from Mombasa, right? Mm -hmm. Well, you know the lead singer? Well, he went home and then cops blew his face off. Yeah. Okay? So that's what they think of that, okay? So he's fronting. They say, ooh, wah, 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 wah. And then Paul Simon was like, he got diamonds on his other her shoes. <laughs> Come on, man. That's a class. You know, we're from the States. We know a hillbilly when we see one and when we hear one. We know the hillbilly's relationship to the Klan and white supremacy. We know that's the music of the enemy. So if the music of the enemy is crisscrossing through and beyond and under and up African rhythms, something's happening there that need to be destroyed. Paul Simon. <laughs> I'm telling you. You see? Then he goes to Brazil. Then I heard his next stop is Jamaica. You know? He's their A number one culture bandit be knocked to his knees and make his nose bleed. So that's what radio does. Television is their lethal weapon. See, because when you annihilate the African images, they are visual. And we've got so many coons running around, on, but no one calls them cool. And we shouldn't even talk about Stephen Fletcher. You know, we shouldn't even talk about Rochester and all them. Rochester never, and, and Stephen Fletcher and them, as Uncle Tommy as they was, never got on television and said, your mother's so black and ugly and her lips are so big. Boy, I'm telling you, I'm Philly where I come from, that'll get your chops busted. I mean, up for real. But they're resurrecting that. At the same time, we're trying to put the African queen on a pedestal. They come with a shenane. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> they come with that Jamie Foxx thing. Make, they're making fun of African womanhood, and that ain't never a joke. That ain't never a joke, because that's the fundamental basis of where we come from. And that's our queens and our mothers. Nobody say nothing. You know? Def Jam comedy. What about the onslaught of homosexuality in the African community? Don't you get in front of me. <laughs> the onslaught of, of, of homosexuality is synthetic. And it's brought to you with the help of Shanene, mm -hmm. men on film or men in fitness. It started with, with that boy. Uh, what's, that, what's that boy's name from Living Color? Who they used oh, yeah, yeah. and threw oh, yeah. them out. Yeah. And started with them. See, because our children don't know how to process those images. See, we can say, oh, that's just a joke. No, our children don't know how to process two men feeling on each other on national television. It become an option in their life. And men dressed as women becomes an option in their life. See? So synthetically, the media annihilates African imagery of the black woman and the black man. 
We complain about color purple, but yet we allow these brothers to do all this nonsense. Mm. And they need to be stepped to. They seriously need to be stepped to. Some of the stuff, you know, in South Africa, Bazania, the war didn't take off until we secured the hood. So when it became impossible for the security forces to stay in the hood at night, then you could raise your children, you could have school, raise some food, move armaments around, and teach the revolution. We've got to control the hood. You control the hood, and you control, that means control the economics, the education, everything. But that's another thing, and we're going to get to that. I'm going to try not to be too long, because I'm going to try to get to the point. The lethal weapon is television, anti-African propaganda, okay? First of all, I grew up on cowboys. Cowboys, have you ever seen a Tarzan picture? When they're walking on the rocks, and one of the brothers missed them, go, and one white man looked at another and said, who was in that package? Oh, That's a devaluation of African life. I grew up on that. I know why my generation is crazy. Because I was a victim of the same media. That's settled racism. You know what I'm saying? He's a pack horse. Somebody asked, is the horse dead? They just asked, what, what did we lose in the package? The cowboy mentality transformed itself in the 60s because we was busting pigs down. I mean, we said straight up war with the pigs. They were so brutal that we, they left us no choice. We all carried guns and we had to go to war with them. You know? And we was buckling. But a revolutionary cannot function. A revolutionary first is not somebody who gets real smart politically and then become a leader of the people. A revolutionary is the people in arms. You have to be of the people, you must materialize out of the people and disappear within the people. And we couldn't do that. Because we didn't politicize the people to know what time it was. We had them at a point, but then the uh, 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 John Birch Society financed something called Support Your Local Police. And what came out of that was all these police shows you see there. Bad boy, bad boy, what you gonna do? What you gonna do? Now they want you to see real crime. And they act so, and then they know on film. This is a police officer. Drop that weapon. You have a right to remain. Please, sir, turn around. Walk this way. Don't give me no trouble, sir. Smiling at the camera. You know, as soon as the camera off, they molly hopping, right? And they're giving an image to young people and people who don't understand something that don't exist. You know? So you don't, the one thing right here, I'm going to put it right here. People better look a little deeper at Tupac Shakur. Oh, mm -hmm. He's off. Mm -hmm. Tupac Shakur father was killed by the police. He was a member of the Black Panther Party. Mm. Tupac Shakur, mother was in jail when Tupac was in his belly. Tupac Shakur's father, godfather, is Geronimo Pat, the great Panther who's been locked up for 25 years for a crime he did not commit. They were after Tupac Shakur. Oh. And, but nowhere will you find the evidence to make that analysis. They, and when they come at you, they say, he shot two off duty cops. He throw that on the wall. They say, okay, that might not stick. Uh, he messing with this girl. Slop, throw that on the wall. That may stick. Uh, oh, we got films of Tupac Shakur. Shot. Whenever you see a concerted effort to take somebody down, it's valuable when they take them down. And that's who Tupac Shakur is. And when they found out that they had made Somebody who was based in revolution, who comes from a revolutionary seed, and is still connected to Geronimo Platt, he is not Flavor Flame. Mm. Okay. Everybody know Flavor been on drugs for years. You don't have to tell us that. That ain't nothing new. They look at the boy's behavior and say, man, Chuck and them better cool out Flav. Yeah. I know he on drugs. We know I act with him every day. Members of our family are addicted. So we know when somebody's on. <clears throat> Cowboys went into law enforcement. One of the biggest ones started with lousy Bill Cosby. And he played a CIA agent mm -hmm. called I Spy who went to other people's countries and overthrew governments. We thought it was cool. We think James Bond is cool. We think Indiana Jones going and stealing the wealth of another nation with his imperialist dog is cool. 
and we let our children watch that stuff as if it's cool. And then we wonder why they don't understand colonialism and imperialism. <laughs> it's the media diet. Just like I need to get rid of the ice cream and the cake, we need to push that out. And then we'll have something good. So they have all these police shows. Matter of fact, for entertainment, most of our people sit and watch police work. Whether it's Beverly Hills Cop, whether it's Lethal Weapon. Oh, man, we love the Death Wish series with Charles Bronson. I mean, we watch them all. We're like, Hunter, we're like, all of us. I mean, all of us, think of it now. It's all police shows. Given the police side of interactions within the community. And if your children believe that's the behavior of the police, it's like sending them out to the slaughter. It's like living in the jungle and telling them not to pet the lions. Do you think people in the jungle don't tell them, oh yeah, by the way, before y'all go on out, uh, don't pet the lions, all right? All right, no, don't, don't feed, no, don't, don't feed the tigers, all right? You see if you roll that way, okay? That's a survival skill. So not to tell them the real behavior of the police, have them walking down the street like this. You look like a nigga that we just got a wire on, who's seven foot five, 160 pounds, but I'm only 5'3", sir. Get in the wagon. <laughs> Are you going to read me my rights? Here. Yeah. And if you don't teach that, then you'll severely cripple them. And they may never catch up. Because what you learn in your primary stages, then they got a thing called shit cops. <laughs> By coons. Queen Latifah knocked off her hat, her queenly crown, and went to skeezer. Mm -hmm. The only good man there's a man who got money, take his money, and he sent him out the door. And ain't this funny? This childish. Like, you know, Martin, all of a childish sexual situation. And if you behave that way, or if you think that way, and our people do, you can't get nowhere. You can't build a relationship. You don't know what a man is. You don't know what a woman is. You just say, well, what are you doing with her? Oh, Gene, I know you went with him, but is he better than me? What kind of question is that? <laughs> What kind of question? And they had one where he was supposed to be sick, Martin. And he turned around and bent over and, said, and, and told yeah. him to put the thermometer, you know. And she said, no, Martin. That whole imagery, children don't know how to process that. They just see these imagery. And they're all anti-African. Mm. They're very, very bad. Then you have the music videos. On top of this now, you can understand the annihilation of the African image. Then you have these music videos videos that devalues the cistern in the TNA, shooting body parts, having them doing the worst dances you ever seen, making fun of them, whoop, there it is, and all of this, and booty, and a man singing from this uh, uh, ceramic uh, buttocks, and he's sitting in the groove, I forgot the name of that, uh, a rump shaker, I don't know what, baby got back, baby got back, baby got back, and all that, and all of that, all of this, the children do not know how to process that. They say, if baby got back, I love her better than the, the baby who's nice and loved me in return, who will treat me nice and everything, but she don't got back as defined by the media. Oh, she's a little heavy. Oh, she's a little thin. Oh, she's a little tall. I want this image here that I see in these videos. Little girls want to see, uh-oh, a gangster little boys. The worst boy your daughter, you, you ever want your daughter to ever meet. MC Light, I need a rough neck. I need a rough neck. And the boys, look what Naughty by Nature them has done with that media. They, they, their pants are pulled down, their underwear showing, their shoulders stopped because they have no seam. Their shoes ain't tied, they go through the community like that. If that's not a signal to black men, go get these children. I don't know what is. I really don't. I, I'm a loss for what is a signal to say, oh, freeze, we got to control the hood. What is the signal? What do we have to see? Little boys who are the powerful young boys. Now, these stuff ain't cheap either. They got an expensive pair, $150 sneaks that, that ain't worth tying. Start wearing these plaid lumberjack shirts like these white lumberjacks. And with one button and they slush to the community. Don't that, isn't that a sign that say, oh, yo, I stop it, hey, bro, hey, come here, hey, hey, hold. What's that? What it is, man? Bop, 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 bop. Yeah, all right. Yeah, no, but do I, I tell you what, brother, just think about it, all right? You know, your shoulders should be back. I mean, you're a black man. 
You're the best there is. They don't sold you against yourself. King. Yeah, all right, man. <laughs> and it may register later. Everything adults told me didn't register on the spot. Right. Mm -hmm. But nobody's saying it. And then if the next man say, hey, yo, hold, hold, hold. It's the style, man. What, what, what style, man? You have a negative culture, man. It's synthetic. You know? We got to deal with that. Then the TV talk shows. I call it PR promo and propaganda. The worst of all, the worst enemy that you have is our city. Oh! He is the worst. He brings all the culture bandits in. Marky Mark, BC. We even have Millie Vanilli back home. Try to save them. Then he sit up there, white women all up in their mouth, you know. And, and, and then he try, then he goes over and say, my posse, and then do some stuff with a white boy. He's a straight up punk who got paid because Eddie put him in a position to be used, you know. Just watch it, and he sells white movies to his black audience. And here he is, Claude Van Dammit. You know, you know. <laughs> yeah, Claude, yeah. my new picture, yeah, throw some people around. And what do people talk about on a talk show? Here we are, in the hood, struggling to make ends meet. When well, they sit there, ah, heard you got a new house. <laughs> I bought a new house, you know, because my Lamborghini looked funny sitting in there. Oh, 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 oh. And you got a new film, yes, and here's a clip, you know. And they selling you stuff. Mm -hmm. I made a mistake. The number one purpose of the mass media is to bring audiences to advertisers. That's its number one cost. If you want to buy commercials, it's based on how much audience they have, how much it costs. Super Bowl is about a million dollars for 30 seconds. Because they can say we have 100 million people watching at least. Okay. The talk shows, and not only that, you got Oprah. Oh, yeah. And she's I mentally am. damaged. Oh, yes. 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 You know? Oh, yes. You got Oprah, then you have uh, 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 Jenny Jones, and you have all these people. Oh, yes. They say, tonight on Oprah, a woman who married her cousin who didn't know if he was her aunt, but he was her uncle, but was living with his father on 75th Street on Oprah. And for you to have an appetite to that, something wrong with you, say, wow, what a show. <laughs> Something wrong with you if you won't give her 90 minutes to run that on you. And, and, and Oprah just sit up, she's just as crazy as a loon. <laughs> you know, she's just as crazy. But then you have Donahue, you have Rivera, you have all these people, and they don't be talking about nothing, which again creates an information diet of nothing. You sit the plate in front of you, and there's nothing that will partake that you can partake of, which will feed your political action, clear up your consciousness to say how your strategies and tactics should be developed to solve problems. You don't have nothing. The women are becoming soap opera queens, and the men think they're macho men drinking beer and waiting for the sweetest soccer team. See what they do with your mind? So they play it, and it's all annihilating our Africanness. Then is the free TV, that's free TV. Then we pay cable rates to see more of it. So we can see Leave It, leave it to Beaver and Andy Griffith again. <laughs> All this rehash stuff, reruns from the movies, and everything we will actually see again. Okay? Then there's pay for view. So you can see bogus fights and stuff, fixed fights and stuff for $30. All we got is money, right? You know? So it all creates what I call graffiti people. Graffiti of people are people who walk around with all kinds of stuff on their body. Yeah. Coca-Cola fashion. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And that's why they use athletes. They use baseball hats, starter jackets, a hundred something, all these racist teams. Cleveland Indians. You know, Atlanta Brave, Florida Seminole all these rich white men selling you product. Children who can't even get out of high school in Georgetown across the day. Georgetown wouldn't even let them in. <laughs> he even has a photo of black people. You know, all is walking around prostrate. Then there's the things they, I had a sister in New York had, had a t-shirt on and said, uh, don't ask me S-H-I-T. 
walking around. I said, yo, sister, can I ask you something? <laughs> Coca-Cola, sports gear, college gear, sign on T-shirt, put on the cars. They got big gun on the car. Touch this car and make my day. Wonder who's driving that? Friendly guy, right? All kinds of stuff. Don't ask me. Then you come up and you throw, put the plugs in your ear, walk through the hood and be oblivious of your environment. Mm -hmm. We don't even speak to each other. Mm -hmm. Brother, well, I don't know how it is down here. Mm -hmm. But up north, you don't speak to walk past. Another African walk right up to you. Your eyes meet and you go down. Hers go up, you go. <laughs> or you go, like somebody call you. African don't even recognize themselves. Don't speak to me. So it's all moving the politics of sports. In the politics of sports, you have Muhammad Ali. In the book, you will see how he loved white women. Never knew that, did you? You know, read Jim Brown's book. And read about Jim Brown, how you love women. You know? Quickly. I hate to read these things, but this is important. This is from the new book. In his book, Out of Bounds, Jim Brown, he spends most of his time telling you about the sexual practice of rich and, and the infamous. Jocks can't help but brag about their sexual habits as if it has some relevancy beyond their tired worldview. Brown didn't count like Wilt did, he didn't count the number, but his relevations documents how important a nut is to him. His passages on his love for partying at Playboy magazine porno king Hugh Hefner's mansion turns the stomach. In the next breath, he is proclaiming he is for the struggle and down with the brothers. It is, it is the kind of mentality that needs to be kept from our impressionable youth. Listen to this big dumb jock suck up to white culture and decadence in his book. Quote, once I'm through the gate, he talking about Hugh Hefner's, I stop and gaze at the cattle-like, castle-like home, park, go into the front door, sit down, order the finest foods and some drinks, unwind, and let it hit me. I'm at the mansion. By the way, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air did a thing on the mansion two episodes ago, mm -hmm. where Hillary was going to get shot in the nude, which she did, and then went to Hugh Hefner's mansion. These niggas are crazy. Okay? He says, the mansion is paradise. Beautiful trees, beautiful animals, beautiful gymnasium, beautiful jacuzzi beneath the side of a mountain, beautiful bathhouse, shower, sauna, giant pillars, classical music, classical music, pick up on that. Long, deep, beautiful pool in which you can wear a, ba a bathing suit or not. And beautiful girls, 18 to 24, tanning around the pool, only in tops, only in bottoms, or neither. Oh. Hef used to throw his midsummer night dream party. He enclosed, he enclosed the entire yard with a tent, installed two indoor discos, served shrimp, lobster, and crab. The Manhattan transfer would sing white group. Mm -hmm. Clint Eastwood would be there. Steve McQueen would be there. All the Hollywood power. Had there. And there would be the one guy, there would be one guy to every three girls. Keeping with the evening's theme, the girls would wear negligee, shorty underwear, exotic garters, and even if you were shy, a shy unit, you, and didn't want to see their exquisitive gifts, you had a choice, and it was all right in front of you. That's Jim Brown from his book, Out of Bounds. Athletes are crazy, and their job is to lead our youth into that same world of decadence. European decadence. But yet, we see them as great athletes, Will Chamberlain, Michael Tyson, they took him down because he found out they were stealing all his money. Yeah. You know, they took him down. His queen tried to tell him, all right? Nice to get on brothers for this. His queen said, hey, Mike, look, my mom was managing my career. I know about percentages and ages. I've been going through your books, Mike. Where's your bread? He said, duh, I don't know. She said, well, Mike, 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 look, they're here. You made a hundred million dollars. Mike, you ain't got two mil in the bank. Where's your money, Mike? Duh, I don't know. And when she led him to where her mo his money was, which was not in his account, the whole media came down on her and her mother for telling him that and said she was the worst 
woman in the world. First of all, I tell brothers, first of all, they say, well, dude, she was just trying to get his money. Put that out there. Brothers bought it. Hook, line, and sinker. And re got real in. He tried, well, if, he, if she wanted to get his money, she was his wife. His friends yes. in Brooklyn wanted to wanted to kill her. They wanted to jump her. To jump her. He was ready to attack her. That's his wife. Mm -hmm. I didn't pick Mike Tyson's wife. He did. You have to respect that. And when they found out that he had fired his manager, and all of that, that he was even adopted by the mob. Custody Amato adopted him in his teens so that he could legally sign the contract for his slave. They used to didn't give him no socks and no robe, push him in a ring like a barbarian, make sure he didn't have no school. And when he found out, started making his money, he took him down. Okay? Jim Brown, Spencer Haywood, and a man, he's in the book, he's a fool, she's a fool. Okay? And they talk about her and Grace Jones kissing and hugging on the floor as white people sit around and watch them. Okay? And Spencer Haywood's book. Entertainers. You got Sammy Davis Jr. In the book, I got them and I described a very important passage to me. Sammy Davis Jr. was a devil worshiper. And he said, I didn't really believe in the old cult. And I got quotes from him, not what I say. He said, I just like the orgies with the white women. And he was supposed to be at Sharon Tay's house the night. Charles Manson slaughtered everybody. Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry to say Sammy wasn't there. <laughs> and he couldn't leave us until he did more damage. Okay? Miles Davis, I criticize Miles because I love Miles. But Miles was a contradiction. He would talk about white people, but he couldn't stay out of their bedroom. Mm -hmm. And he couldn't keep their musicians out of his band. We've got to get away from that dichotomy. Either you're down or you're not. Mm -hmm. You know? Nina Simone was straight out crazy. I loved her, <laughs> loved her music, her contributions in Young, Gifted, and Black, and Mississippi Goddamn, and all these yeah. good works of art. She still was an entertainer, and we accept them being crazy. She was, she, she was the kept woman of the, uh, 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 the uh, uh, Prime Minister of Barbados, and everybody knew it, dissing his wife, different, dissing their culture, and she went along, and she, now she lives in Belgium with some white men. The Temptations, I used them as an example of how Barry Gordy controlled, because you have to understand for Barry Gordy to understand Michael Jackson. Mm -hmm. Michael Jackson, they're taking him down now because he can no longer be used. Mm -hmm. They tried to rally behind him. They gave him Oprah. They gave him the Super Bowl because he was used to help immunize our kids, and he was part of the New World Order uh, uh, exporting American culture, uh, uh, black culture as American culture, which they would then export Coca-Cola and everything else. Mm -hmm. See what I mean? And I could go in there, I go in a lot, as a matter of fact, the chapter on Michael Jackson is huge. <laughs> and this is before I, I have to add an epilogue because they've taken him down, Michael Jackson, and people are crazy. People walk up to you and say, do you think Michael Jackson really does? <laughs> do you? Oh, Mikey couldn't have done that. A man who mutilates himself, turns himself white, mm -hmm. let Dr. Frankenstein break his face, reconstruct it in the image of the enemy. <laughs> Bleach his skin, I hang out with white little boys and Elizabeth Taylor, and you gonna tell me you're shocked? That's not the issue. The issue is why are they taking him down? Why are they telling you now? It's because he's made almost a billion dollars. He's been used. And to a slave payday that will come, they make you rich, and like Mike Tyson and the rest of them, Muhammad Ali, they take the money back. It's like it's on a string. And they betray us for 10 pieces of silver, and they don't even get to keep the 10 pieces of silver. You know. Finally, in solutions. Quickly, one, we have to become African-centered. That means putting your brain computer, thinking only in the interest of you, thinking on the basis of fact instead of emotion, because you can't follow nothing on emotion. Emotion dissipates and change. That's why people get divorced. I love you, honey. I love you. I love you. I love you so much. And then five years later, I you. <laughs> Emotions change. Intellect don't change. Love your queen intellectually. And it won't change. Because you love, love on the basis of what she do, what she mean to you. Love your king emotion, Not emotionally, but intellectually. If she ever get to the point, that's love when you get into that intellectual thing. You get into that intellectual thing, you love her very essence of her being because people are what they do. 
not what they look like. That we must analyze everything. Everything gets analyzed. Everything. And it's fun. I sit and watch television with my kids and watch them fuss them. They can, they can watch Thundercats. They can watch cartoons. And say, oh, Daddy, did you see that? Look, they're now this. They're using the third eye as an evil uh, 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 weapon, a laser weapon. They take out our pyramids and make it pyramids are made in an evil base. They make a mummy, a monster, when he's our ancestor. And when your children can kick that back to you, you're teaching them right. Okay? We got to take the fat out of our informational diet, which means almost throw away everything. Then as information comes on Somalia, you process it differently. And a little short trip to the library or somewhere will give you the background on anything. Because if you have no basis, I could say anything. That's why I always uh, 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 quote sources where you can go back and check it out. Because I respect your intellect. We must expose the traitors. We never want to expose the traitors. I expose them all. You know, Create an educational system. We need an educational system that goes from, from kindergarten all the way up to graduate school. And there ain't no way anybody can tell us we cannot do that. You mean you mean to tell me we cannot put together educational institution for old children from elementary, middle school, high school, and colleges? You mean we can't do that? I don't believe that. We won't do it. We don't see the importance of it. So we let these people play in our children's minds, drive them stark raving mad, run into crack, drugs, Prozac, anything, or become so disgustingly bourgeois they of no use to you. <laughs> and we say, Dad, you jive. Children are socialized. You mean we can't come up with all the people we have in the sciences, in the arts, in African studies? I don't mean just to say what's Africa. I mean to be, we're mathematics. We invented math. Michael Jordan flying through the air, dunk, doing a 360 in the air, and dunking a basketball over his shoulders, a mathematical computation with his body. Hmm. Little girls doing double dutch is a mathematical computation with their body. Little girls doing hand job is a mathematical computation with your body. Music is mathematical computations. And then they, we let people tell our children, math is too hard for you people. Why don't you take something easy? Mm -hmm. I'm talking about schools that are computerized. Computers are cheap now. You know, we're building two in Philly. We got four. We got to build these schools and educate our own. Then we can stop this remedial work. You know, we know that it is a privilege to be an African, but we don't behave that way. We will. All over this country where I travel, there's people like yourself duplicating themselves, passing it on. The movement's on the move, but nobody's there to tell it. Because our media, those blacks you see in Philly and in, in Atlanta on television, is reading copy written by some strange white boy. Mm -hmm. And it's anti-African. The only time we hit the news is crime. OK? So we need study groups to get together. And we need to start doing some practical things. Our children don't believe we're serious because we've produced nothing to show it but ideas, talk, and books. Right. We need to build a little micro. We need co-op. <laughs> you mean we can't cooperatively get together little groups and buy in co-ops instead of going to the market and letting them fleece us? You mean we can't find out how to hook up the black farmers and buy cheaply in co-ops? You mean we can't put a little money together and start credit unions just for disaster relief? <laughs> Just to start to keep you from losing your mortgage? Here, here sometime all you need is $800. Mm -hmm. You mean we can't, we, we have no feel for extended family that we can do that? If we haven't produced it, we haven't seen the importance of it. And those are the things we need to, revolution, they have us thinking the mass media, and I'm saying this in clothing, has us thinking that a revolutionary with dark glasses and lay back and, and full of hate. A revolutionary is full of love. And revolution is practical, everyday things. A mother being careful and raising the children is revolutionary. Teaching him the right thing is revolutionary. Pop rumbling to the dead, defend the family and take them forward, and working in concert with his woman is revolutionary. Working together with the neighbors in small groups, doing modest things is revolutionary because we have to be taught to work together again and not in competition. If you're trying to keep up with the Joneses, let me tell you, I'm Jones. You pass me. <laughs> so forget that. All right? All right? 
jokes ain't happening, you know. If all of us eat us, we're going to sink or swim. Homelessness in the community is unacceptable. We come from a culture that says extended family extends itself and doesn't allow people to go all the way down unless they're dependent on some substances. And we're going to have to find out how to do remedial things on them. Hey, thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be in Atlanta.